Hi, this is Trapology 101 and I'm bringing you last week's recap, where we cover some of the biggest news from the past week. Before we start, don't forget to hit the like button, share and also subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Without further ado, let's get cracking! One of the biggest news from last week was the fact that Polji got arrested right after his album release party of his much-awaited Hall of Fame album, party which was happening down in a club in Miami. From what I gathered so far, it looks like it was yet another case of some cops just deciding to harass another big-name rapper as lately the cops have made quite a habit of doing so. Because if you all recall, NBA Youngboy's case was named Never Free Again, just showing out the ill intentions the cops had for him. Regarding Pology, it seems like he was leaving the party when the cops pulled over his car. The strangest part is that allegedly Pology wasn't even the one driving the car, as he had a driver. But when the cops stopped the car, it looks like they were after Pology, as they were desperately trying to get him out from the backseat. But Pology seemingly did not indulge to their request, and an altercation broke out. An altercation which allegedly was quite a big one as Pology even managed to break the rear window of one of the police cars. Plus, it seems like he has sent out quite a few threats to the cops. Also, it looks like Pology was not the only one involved within the incident as his baby mama and brother was also arrested by the cops. For those worrying about Pology, they shouldn't worry that much as his bond is actually set quite low at just $19,500, so he'll walk out probably quite soon and frankly speaking, even the apology most probably a bit overreacted, but I have to say that the cops were definitely on the wrong here, as they literally had nothing on apology, seemingly being just another random target to pick up on. Now someone less fortunate than apology was Push Eisty, who recently just got his bond revoked, as initially it was set at the meager $10,000 with Push Eisty seemingly walking away quite easily. But the judge ultimately decided to revoke his bond due to his previous case from late 2020 when Push Eisty was involved in another shooting in a parking lot where allegedly a sneaker deal has gone sour. The judge was quite bitter with Shiesty, as she can be quoted saying, there is no chance I'm giving bond to this kid right now, which seems quite harsh to me. As a quick side note, the judge is the same one that went viral last year for meeting one of his ex-classmates in court as she was convicting him. Okay, Mr. Booth, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Did you go to Nautilus for middle school? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry oh, to see you there. I always wondered what happened to you, sir. Oh my goodness. This is the nicest kid in middle school. For those wondering what happened in Push Eisty's case, well, it looks like Shiesty was leaving the club when he accidentally dropped some money on the floor and the scuffle broke out, most probably with people trying to reach for his money and accidentally Shiesty's gun was discharged with the bullet hitting the security guard's ankle. And on 30th of May, Shiesty proceeded to turn himself in to the police. Since turning himself in, it seems like Pooh Shiesty hasn't been doing the greatest mentally, as he has been put on the suicide watch list and he has been given the turtle suit, which is a suit that tries to prevent inmates from committing suicide. I truly feel sorry for Pooh Shiesty and his mental health, as even though he has been riding at the top of the rap game lately, his brother loss must have taken quite a toll on him and now coupled with his upcoming trial he must be in a really fragile state and I'm hoping that his mentor Gucci Mane can get him some good lawyers and get him out as soon as possible because Push Icy is truly one of the most lovable and goofiest characters of the rap game currently and he has the charisma to become one of the next big things just like Lil Dirk and Lil Baby did. 
plus besides his fragile mental state it's really unfortunate for Pushaisti that he is incarcerated as most probably he was about to be featured on the double XL freshman list but the likelihood of this is quite small right now speaking of the double XL freshman list this leak has been circulating around the internet for quite a while do you think this is an accurate leak or not and who do you think will make the list? Please let me know down in the comment section and please send out prayers to Pushaisti that it will be all alright. This week Lil Wayne's legendary quarter tree turned 13 and he was celebrating this through his Instagram where he thanked everyone for the support that he received back at the time. Happy 13th to the project that really showed me my fans and supporters have love for me. We did a melee, the first week in a time where sales were down because of piracy and bootlegging. For this, I'll be forever grateful, said Lil Wayne on his Instagram account. In his post, Wayne refers to a time when sales of physical copies were almost at an all-time low and piracy at an all-time high, as streaming platforms were not quite a big thing yet. The best option people had back then was iTunes, where they could either purchase singles for $1 or buy the whole album. The Carter Tree also had the fourth highest first week debut of any rap album, being behind only albums such as Eminem's Marshall Matters LP, The Eminem Show LP, and 50 Cent's The Massacre. This is no small achievement at all, considering that all the previously mentioned albums came out slightly earlier when there weren't that many internet users, so there was likely less piracy. Since then, only one rap artist has managed to break the 1 million sales mark during its first week. This being Drake with his Views album, which was arguably Drake's less good album, before deciding to gift us with the hot, double bloated, mediocre, yet radio friendly and stream friendly Scorpio. For some of you this might not be Wayne's best work, but you can deny the immense cultural importance of the album. And the album will always have a soft spot for me, as it was one of my my earliest memories of rap music as I remember sitting in front of the telly waiting for lollipop to turn up on TV and hope that I won't get caught by my parents. So down in the comment section please let me know what's your favorite song from the album and also what's your favorite memory about the album. Looks like we are about to get a new Juice WRLD album, as his manager, Pete, can't pronounce his whole name, gave an interview for Edin Ross and Zayas. He revealed that the album, The Party Never Ends, will drop soon and expect big features like Lil Uzi Vert. Meanwhile, he also took time to hit out at the leakers, who recently managed to leak Lil Uzi Vert's much-awaited remix of Lucid Dreams. Weird ass that keep selling songs for $10,000 and ruining it for everybody else and letting us not put a full plan together, that's lame as f Before you leak it, come to me, I'll give you the $10,000, okay? Because <laughs> you ruin plans for everybody else. Also, regarding Juice Walk, there seems to be a documentary in the making that is about to premiere on HBO, possibly even further pushing his appeal to the mainstream. Now going back to Pology, it looks like he is on his way to outsell the Migos. Early sales projections came in and seems like Pology is about to sell somewhere between 165 to 175k. Meanwhile Migos is about to still sell a more than respectable 125 to 135k first week. This is still quite a big achievement from the Migos, but it also represents a slight downcrease from Culture 2 which sold a whopping 100 99k first week. Now we can argue that Culture 2 was longer, which means of course more streams, but it had only 4 more songs. What makes this second place even more painful is the fact that Culture 3 was one of the most anticipated albums of the year and it is packed with all-star features. But looks like in the end all the hassle with the label and the delays affected the sales and hype. Plus I think we have underestimated Polo G and his fanbase quite a lot, as for some of us Polo G was rather a meme or 
or a punching bag, with people labeling him as Piano Jim for constantly using piano samples. But while we have been mocking him, it seems like he actually built a quite solid fan base that helped him to reach number one on both the Billboard Hot 100 and the Billboard Hot 200. Lastly, it was reported by British media news outlet The Sun that there has been an explosive argument between Mariah Carey and Jay-Z, prompting her to leave Jay-Z's Rock Nation management. Even though Mariah truly left Jay-Z's Rock Nation management, it seems like the terms were much more friendlier and it is claimed that Mariah wished to downsize her team and get more one-on-one -on -one time with her managers. Mariah also came out refuting the claims about her and Jay-Z's explosive meeting, saying the following. The only explosive situation I'd ever get into with Hove, Jay-Z, is a creative tangent, such as our number one song Heartbreaker. To the people who make up these lies, I say poof, vamos, son of a b Here Mariah is referencing back to their number one song Heartbreaker, which they released all the way back in 1999. My personal take on the whole situation is that most probably Mariah wants to maybe try something new and try rejuvenating her career a bit, as the only time of the year when we actually hear or care about her is around Christmas. Thus, she might try to get back into the spotlight with a new management team, which is not a downsize at all I'd say, because if we look at their roster, it's even more packed than Rock Nation having signed superstars such as Bradley Cooper, Johnny Depp, Tom Hardy, Emilia Clarke and everyone's favorite pyrotechnician Michael Bay. So yeah, this has been last week's recap and don't worry if I omitted probably the biggest news from last week, that of Kid Leroy signing to Justin Bieber's management as I have a whole video prepared on that, so stay tuned. And don't forget to drop a like, share and even subscribe and till next time stay safe and see you around folks.